Greetings everyone, I'm Pastor David and uh, welcome to this segment of Truth Seekers TV. This is Gateway Ministries and it's just awesome to be here today. As you can see, I got uh, the beautiful Lake Ontario behind us. We're at, uh, we're at the boardwalk down in uh, Oshawa and uh, it's just a glorious day. Uh, the, the nice nice breeze and the sun is shining, the sky is blue and it's just awesome to be alive. Amen. And even if it was raining, praise God, you know, we got such a short time left. The signs and wonders that are just flowing right now, the prophets are speaking on behalf of God. Things are happening all over the all over the world. And you know, you go back into the segments on the kingdom message, you're gonna find in Matthew 24, 14, Jesus says, and I'm just paraphrasing, but he said, truthfully, he said, don't look at an event. Don't look to the earthquakes and the tornadoes and things like that. And our hearts go to all those that are suffering and such a thing. But you know what? It's because we preach the kingdom of God. And that's what this message is all about. And this is the, the final segment of the, the gates of uh, Jerusalem, our spiritual journey of salvation. And so, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this glorious day. I thank you for this means that we can come uh, in your presence and, and just touch so many with the truth of your word. Let us all be renewed in the spirit of our minds. Let us have a revelation today like we've never had before to help us on our journey with you, Lord, that, uh, that the destinies await us that are for Christ in us. And, all that we're learning, Lord, we just put it all together. I just declare the blood, the cross, the resurrection of Jesus Christ between us and all that's evil so that we can get done what God would have us to get done. We just want to please you today, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. So turn your Bibles to uh, Philippians 3. We're going to go back to Philippians 3, verse 8. To start off, the, uh, we're just going to get ready to enter into the fountain gate. We've already gone over the sheep and the fish. Uh, we couple those two together, and I'm not going to go into too much of a recap. Uh, you can go back, or you've been following along anyway, uh, the, the sheep and the fish. And uh, I know my editor has been putting up uh, 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 pictures of the map of uh, the city of Jerusalem from Nehemiah's time, and you've got all the different gates on there outlined. So we have the sheep and the fish gate coupled together, and then we have the, uh, the old, the valley, and the dung, or the refuse gate. And this is all taken from Nehemiah chapter 3, so you can go back into those scriptures and read all about it and uh, we're just applying the scriptures from the Old Testament into the New Covenant which is perfectly fine as we've uh, already learned about all scripture has been you know breathed by God inspired by God to all his writers for us today and we'll take everything and anything that can help us we're building a foundation of God's love through his word for our own personal lives and that when we gather together we can do the same for all the multitude of Saints that are going to come together as one in Christ being equipped and corrected for this day for right now so I had you turn to Philippians 3 and 8, and it's, uh, you know, we've already gone through the, uh, the old, the valley, and the dung. Things have been released. We've gone through deliverance, and uh, there's some awesome teaching there, to God be the glory, um, on that area of, of the solid, the, the, you know, going to that root, that problem, that root within us. And, uh, we've, you know, we've seen the fruit of bad behavior. Now we go to the root that causes it. We're going to be honest with ourselves and truthful within ourselves. You know, it's the truth that sets us free, and who the sun sets free is free indeed. That's what Christianity is all about, walking in victory, not just being born again, but walking in victory. So Paul wrote in Philippians 3 verse 8, Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ, of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish or dung or refuse, that I may gain Christ. And that's what we're doing here. Now we're going to enter into the fountain and the water gate. Powerful, powerful words are going to come forth now because it's in that divine order of God. You know, um, the the fact that I'm not giving, there, there's so many scriptures I can give as a foundation to these teachings, and I'm just going to leave it with uh, you, as you uh, are led by the Holy Spirit to go into the Word for your, for your own selves, for your own redemption and knowledge of the Christ in you. We forget those things that are behind. Today is a new day. It's a brand new day. I don't want yesterday, you know, and I'm not even going to boast about tomorrow. I have today. And what I've been given for today, the abundance that I have in, in the material things and the spiritual things, is just for today. Let us focus on that. So, with the fountain gate, it, uh, it, you'll find uh, the introduction to the fountain gate in Nehemiah chapter 3, verse 15. And the person who was put in charge of rebuilding that gate by Nehemiah, his name translates to reward. Reward. And so, when we make the right choices, God will will reward us for that right choice. I've seen it in my own, in myself, in my own journey, uh, and it's about breaking cycles. We break these cycles, I'm telling you. A cycle is of Satan, and, and an appointment is from God, and it's a season, an appointed season in your life. 
to learn him, to understand him better, that we take our eyes off our pain and suffering. We say, no, I'm, I know that's happening. I, I totally agree it's happening. I'm not denying it, but I'm gonna look to you, Lord Jesus. I wanna know you and your word, and I'm gonna build a foundation so that I will never go through this again. Who wants to keep going around that same old mountain? Who wants to keep going through that same demonic cycle? I know I don't. And so with that, we've come together as uh, ministers at Gateway Ministries to pr produce and to provide a foundation of scriptures. So now we're entering the fountain gate. And I'd like you to turn to uh, Psalm 36, verse 9. Psalm 36, verse 9. And we're just going to look at some scriptures, some encouraging scriptures. And I'm telling you, the Psalms are really coming alive right now for a lot of people. Because as we see the suffering in the world, we know within ourselves that June, July, and August, as it's being prophesied right now all over the world, that God is really speaking to his people, that he wants us to, to break these cycles in preparation for what's going to happen in September. And I am just so overwhelmed by what I'm seeing right now that's coming across uh, all the different types of communication uh, uh, means of, of what these prophets around the world are saying. And it's time. It's time to break these cycles and it's time to move into a place that we are ready for what's going to happen in September. And that's what's so powerful about I'm just so blessed to be part of it, to be doing this teaching and be part of the ministry that he's given to us, that we've received this ministry to do reconciliation between ourselves and God through Jesus Christ. And this is all part of it. So Psalm 36, verse 9. And uh, uh, David wrote this psalm. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. For with you, capital Y, so he's talking about the Lord, is the fountain of life. When we get through the dirties of our lives, when we come to that sheep gate, and we go to that fish gate, and we start fishing for men, and things just aren't, we're not bearing fruit like we should. We get the signal from God in the spirit realm to come through the passageway of the old gate. And when we go through the old gate, we're given all the signs and wonders within ourselves of what we need to go to the valley for. And it's in the valley that he walks with us, and he, he shows us how to get delivered of those things. Fear, fear is huge right now in the world. Fear is everywhere, it's rampant. I've seen some of the bravest, courageous, spirit-filled people right now are wondering. Same as John the Baptist. John the Baptist, when he was in jail, he sent his disciples to Jesus to find out if he truly was the one. That's happening right now. That's a spirit of fear. God bless John the Baptist. He was an amazing man of God. But it was only a thought. It was a thought that came into his mind, and it was a thought of fear. And, uh, you know, we declare the blood to cross the resurrection of Jesus Christ between our minds and those unclean thoughts. I got a revelation last night about that. And I've been declaring that over myself. Because the attacks are on. Attacks of lust, attacks of... Uh, of um, all sorts of things that are evil in this world that we know we, we, we are under the sway of the, of the wicked one. And you can't look left or right, man, without seeing something that's just so not for the kingdom of God. Uh, religious spirits, I'm telling you, protect my mind. Let me not ever waver in the way that I would think that Christ is not coming. No, he's coming. And I will not fall away in the name of Jesus, not by anything I did, but by the knowledge of the Christ in me. That listen, I'm going to say it again, for with you, Lord, is the fountain of life. That is the tree of life. I do not need to go to the tree of knowledge of good and evil no longer. I cast down those thoughts that would exalt itself more than that of God. I cannot allow myself, and I don't want to see any of my brothers and sisters get into a place of pride. I'm telling you, pride is so rampant right now. The pride of life. Some of the things that Hollywood's putting out and the things that are on TV and that. I, I say, you know what? We've got to cut those things off, man. We've got to cut those things away. They are so... Uh, they, they just want to put our minds to sleep. It's idolatry. All the, you know, they went from uh, Hollywood TV to reality TV now. What's so real about that? It's all satanic. Look at it. Look what it's producing. Look at the fruit of it. We want to escape those things. Let's not sit back and say, well, we're just going to wait for Jesus to come. I'm going to put on the TV and watch it 12 hours a day. Let's just go to the computer. Let's do the first thing in the morning. Let's just go to the computer and see what, what's happening in the world. Who cares what's happening in the world? What's happening in God's kingdom? When you get to the fountain, the water gate, when you, when you dump the things that I've just been discussing and you truly come alive, you, you know what? When you get introduced to the fountain gate, it's the baptism with the Spirit. It is the baptism with the Holy Spirit. This overwhelming presence of the Holy Spirit to take over our spiritual minds so our soul and body start to do the things that God would want us to do. What is it, Lord, you want me to pray? What is it, Lord, you would want me to do today? Man, to get into His will and not that of Satan. That our spiritual minds are doing the will of God. And if it's sitting under someone and learning and receiving knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. What did Paul say in Philippians 3.8? That I could gain the knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord. Wow. What a thing to function in. What a thing to look forward to. It excites me. My spirit man is doing backflips knowing.
that even just today as I minister this word, I'm going to learn something new today. And we're all going to learn something new today. And it's all that is new about the Lord, renewing the spirit of our minds. So we enter through the fountain gate, and it's where we're going to prepare ourselves for the horse gate. We need the fountain and the water gate. The fountain is the Holy Spirit. The water is the word. Let's turn to uh, Proverbs 18 and 16, since we're in that general area. Proverbs 18 and 16. Praise be to God. It's a wonderful day. Proverbs 18 and 16. Listen to this now. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. It's through the sitting down and getting a good teacher into our lives, getting the word, understanding what Billy Graham said not two or three months ago in an interview. He was, he was alert and wide awake when he was asked a question. And with all humility, the, the interviewer said to Billy, is there anything you regret, anything at all? And Billy, in the most humble way, said yes. I did 50 years of ministry with five years of prep. I wish I had a prep for 50 years for five years of ministry. Saints, I cannot express how important that is. Coming from a man who was used by God so mightily, in all humility, for anyone who's an up-and-comer for the kingdom of God would know it is time to prep. And when we go through deliverance, when we finally get rid of that old creature and the new creature comes alive, our minds will be renewed because we chose to, to understand that I am gifted. What happens at the, at the sheep and the fish gate is a person gets introduced to a gift the Lord wants to utilize through him and or her, and they skip right over to the fountain of water. They end up at the horse gate, the burdens come, and they just crumble. There's nothing wrong with that, saints. There's nothing wrong with making a mistake. But we, want, we don't want to keep making the same mistakes. If there's pride, if you always have to have the last word, if you're always arguing about the Word of God, that's pride. Right? It's just in my spirit to express that right now. Fountain and water gate will do us no good unless we go back through the valley to dump that pride at the dung gate. I've been there so many times, saints, I'm telling you. To be released at a time like this to share this word, I know that I know. And I know that if I let my eyes and ears wander, there's that spirit of pride, those unclean thoughts of pride are just ever lurking, ever waiting so subtly to get in. And I would start to take this ministry on as my own. It's not. It's the Lord's. This is not. You do not have a ministry. You've received a ministry from heaven. That's a gift. And it will make room for you. You just have to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And he will exalt you in due time. There is promotions. Spiritual promotions. But it's to those who are humble. It's those who want to serve more than to be served. That's, that's a king and a priest of God in his kingdom. That's one who says, you know what? Man's kingdom, I don't want it. I want God's kingdom. I want to know God's kingdom. And as you look at the structure, the, the diagram that's been put up for you about, the, 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 about Jerusalem and the, the ten gates, that's what the kingdom looks like. That's, that's a type of what the kingdom looks like within us. Being able to understand that I'm going through these gates. And many who hear this message for the first time are Christians who are seasoned and they've, they've been through these gates, they just didn't understand. And it's because of Hosea 4.6 God said, it's because of lack of knowledge my people perish. I, between now and the time I get raptured, I just want to teach. I just want to love the Lord and bring a truth of His Word. And uh, we're just being interrupted right now by some uh, weed ears. So we're just going to take a break to see where this is going to go. I'll be right back. Pastor David, you be blessed. We'll be right back. So it's just awesome. We just, uh, we just uh, <laughs> moved to another location. It's nice and quiet. We've still got Lake Ontario behind us. It's still a beautiful day. You know what? It's awesome to be in the Word of God. Oh, what a way to choose to, to live out a day is to get into the Word of God. So we just uh, we just uh, looked at Romans, or sorry, Proverbs 18 and 16. A man's gift will make room for him and brings him before great men. So continue to to foster the knowledge of your gift, what you're called to do. Get around those who love you. Get around those who can teach you the Word properly. Get around those that are feeding you the Word of God in love, in love with a foundation. Build that foundation for your gift. Spend the time with the Lord. If He wants to use you, He's going to use you. And if you make a mistake, learn from that mistake. It's okay. We're going to get out there. We're going to start doing what we're called to do. I see that happening all over the place. People who tuck themselves away, uh, away from society, away from the body of Christ. They've been offended, however that happened, but they're starting to come out. Their spiritual minds are being renewed. Things are becoming clearer, and that's what this ministry is all about. Gateway Ministries. What gate are you called to? What gate do you man? Where, what, is, what is the Holy Spirit calling us to do? How is He leading us? What, what point of our journey are we at? 
And just to make it all clear, and it's not rocket science, and we're not psychiatrists, we're not psychologists, this is the grace of God. This is, this is what the grace of God looks like. He's allotted us the time to understand His heart so that we can help others to understand His heart too. Amen? It's all about reconciliation. It's reconciliation through Jesus Christ. Uh, and it's just, it's just a, wonderful, uh, a wonderful way to be. So with that, I'd ask, you, I'd, I'd ask you to turn to Galatians 5 and 22, which of course is the fruit of the Spirit. So amongst many things that I could minister on with the fountain and the water gate, we see in Galatians 5 and 22 how Paul was expressing to us something that is so amazing. And, and I'm not going to just read Galatians 5.22. Let's start at verse 17, Galatians 5.17. I'll just wait for you to get there, praise God. Let's start Galatians 5.17. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, right off the bat. The flesh, the body, the soul are always looking for a direction that would be to the benefit of the flesh. Satan was told by God in Genesis 3, from this day forward you will eat the dust of the earth. What's your flesh made out of? The dust of the earth. He wants to feed on it. He wants to get in there. He does it through our spiritual minds. And we want to cut that off. And that's what happened at the dung gate. We went through the valley to cut off the things of the flesh so we could be led of the spirit. And he says, in the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. How many of us have been in that position? Why do I keep getting angry? Why do I keep getting frustrated? Why, oh why, oh why? Even Paul said, the things I want to do, I don't do. The things that I do want to do, I don't. So, we're, we're in good company. He wrote half the New Testament. But he knew that he could go to Jesus Christ and he would say to him, let me be your strength and your weakness. For we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, okay? Christ being the anointing, Christ being the Holy Spirit, Christ that resides in us. It's nothing I can do. You're right, I can't do it. But through the knowledge of the Christ in me, it's endless what we can do. Because it's under the blood. Whether I do good or bad, it's under the blood. I don't want to continue to do bad. I don't want to continue to keep putting Jesus on the cross, if you want that as a mental picture. I want to do good. And it's the goodness of God, Romans 2 and 4, that leads me to want to change. So in this knowledge, he says, But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. If you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Now here we go. This is what we dumped off at the dung gate. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness. Gone. I'm positive we brought a lot of this with us to the cross. We walked through the sheep gate with it. It can't go anywhere unless we go through the old, the valley, and the dung. We can have nothing of the fountain or the water. Really, we can't. You can fake it. You can, there's people out there right now. They're called false prophets, false teachers, false pastors, faking it. I'm not here to condemn anybody. I faked it. I had to learn all this. I'm still learning all this. Be an open book, be an open vessel, to, especially to those around you who God's called you to do ministry with, to serve with. You don't want to do it alone. You, don't, you do not want to isolate yourself, especially at this time, saints. Satan was doing everything to isolate people in their houses, to say, oh, just, just hide, just hide now. Yeah, okay, you're gonna be raptured, but just stay here and don't tell anybody. No, no, I can't think of a better time to be out there right now. Preparing, preparing for those divine appointments. God is orchestrating divine appointments for inner healing, for outward encounters. He is. I know He is. That's what His desire is, to get all of us to that place for divine appointments. This is a divine appointment for me. You know, this may seem like a small thing, but to get it to come together takes prayer, takes, takes uh, uh, organizing. There's things that happen. There's things that will come. You know, uh, there's demonic things that will come. There, there are glorious things that will come. And, and we, we stick to it. I know myself, if I do not keep my eyes on Jesus and what he's called me to do, I can be so easily distracted. And it's done through people. It's done through circumstances. And I'm saying, no, no, I'm going to forget those things that are behind. I want to go forward now. And I want to go forward with people who want to go forward too. That we're not going to linger in our yesterdays. We're going to linger in those pains. No, no, we're going forward. Idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dis dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Matthew 5, 3. Those who are poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Those who are poor in spirit. When we see within ourselves how poor in spirit we truly are, that our spirit man, our spiritual minds, must be renewed. Our spiritual minds must be renewed to know that our spirit man without Christ is bankrupt. 
And without our spiritual minds being renewed to salvation, our spirit man, along with our soul, are going to hell. That's what salvation is all about. It is a simple fact, saints. It is a simple fact that all these things I just read, if there's anything within us, do not go by the fact, well, I've got the grace of God. I can continue in this way. No, we don't. We have the grace of God to fix it. Because once we give up our ghost, once our spirit man leaves us at death, our mortal bodies die, the spirit cannot stay in a dead body. That's the same as an unclean spirit. An unclean spirit that is able to enter into a man's mind to, keep, to get him to commit suicide, once his body is dead, that unclean spirit has done its job, it's, it's a thought, it leaves and looks for another. If we have the Holy Spirit within us, because we know Jesus Christ, we've been reconciled to God because of our walk with the Lord, then our spirit man goes on into heaven, into paradise. But without that, without knowing how poor in spirit we are, that's why religious spirits, demonic forces, are out there so readily available to get us on material things. To have the biggest building, to have the nicest car. If you don't have a nice suit on, who are you? It's, no, it's a terrible thing, saints. It, listen, I, I love money just for the fact that it gives me freedom. Right? And it's not the love of money, it, it, or sorry, it's, it's not money that's a problem, it's the, it's the love of money. Now when I said I love money, it's just based on the fact that I know who I am in Christ and what I need, the necessities for the Christ in me, will be met. And that gives me the freedom to do what I'm doing right now. It has freed me up, literally. Caesar needs money, uh, you know, we, we need money to do certain things, but I cannot find anywhere in the Bible where there's a, a message of the gospel of prosperity. There's a gospel of the kingdom of God. And we want to make sure we're teaching the right gospel, because any other gospel is a lie. When we understand who we are in Christ, our necessities are met. That's all there is to it. And what we need to do what we're going to do, hey, and if God wants to hold it back from me, to, teach, to show me how to love Him, how to have faith in Him, faith in God is love. Faith in God Almighty, faith in Jesus Christ, the Christ in me, that faith, as we're going to learn in the, in, in the teachings to come, is, is, is a foundation of love that no matter if I have it or not, I love God first. If someone leaves me or something happens in my life, I love God first. My first point of contact for any situation, good or bad, I love God first. I love him too much to worry. I love him too much to complain. I love him too much to allow myself to go to a place where Satan would say, well, you don't have what he does. You don't have what they do. You should be upset or you should be, you should be you know, uh, worried within yourself or fearful. No, no. Perfect love casts out all fear. No matter what happens before us, no matter what the destruction. And we're, we're planning, like we're preparing for that. That's what this ministry is all about, preparing those. Both when we're together as gatherings or on this, this means of communication, we are preparing ourselves for what's about to happen. We are living the days of Mat Matthew 24 and Luke 21. The Olivet Disclosure, the Mount of Olives Disclosure of Jesus Christ to his disciples, to us, of what the end times would look like, the end time of the church. Because once we're caught up and out of here, then comes the Great Tribulation. Saints, learn these teachings, learn these words, start to study the Bible, ask the Holy Spirit to show you. We are in tribulation time. Once we're, we, have, we avoid the wrath of God because we're his saints, once that door closes like he closed the door to the ark with Noah, that's the catching away of the saints. It could happen any second now. That's how I live. That's the spirit within my mind. I know. I don't set my clock to it. I don't set my time to it or anything like that. Jesus himself doesn't even know when he's coming. But you know what? That does not stop me from doing what I'm doing now with full fervency, effectual fervency, praying without ceasing for the souls that are lost, souls that do not have a, spirit, a spiritual mind attached to it that is in sync with God Almighty. That's a scary place to be. Even when your minds are caught up with, with the Lord, things can be pretty frightful around us. But we learn that the agape love, the unconditional care, unconditional acceptance, unconditional everything towards God because He has that towards us. That's the way we live this out. So in saying that, we know that but the, in, verse, in, in verse 22 of Galatians 5, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, and self-control. Against those, or sorry, uh, against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. One of the greatest things that's dividing the body of Christ at this very time is envy. We are so divided by it. You don't understand the Lord the way I do, so I can't pray with you or I can't be with you. We've seen things here and there, prayer meetings. We've seen, you know, people gather. 
But you know what? In this time of preparation, June, July, and August of 2011, once September comes, I cannot explain the totality of what God is going to be doing on this earth. I, I know what Matthew 24 and Luke 21 say, so I'm just living with that. That's a prophetic word. It's not going to change. It was spoken by Jesus Christ himself. It's going to happen, and they're happening right now. But at the same time, I want to know what's happening spiritually. Uh, no, I've grown tired of watching news reports and what, you know, Barack Obama's doing this now. Who cares? He's got to come to the Lord just like we all did. God bless the man. I pray for my leaders. Sure I do. Well, let them wise up. Let them come and know the kingdom. I pray for my prime minister that he would know the kingdom of God. This country, he, our prime minister here in Canada was just given a four-year term of a majority uh, uh, parliament. And I'm, I'm praying. I'm saying, Lord, wow, praise God that the that through this man, he, he could do so many things for your kingdom and that the whole nation of Canada would benefit in preparation for the catching away. But we have choice. You know, we pray and pray and pray, but people still have choice. What do we choose? What are we choosing? I choose to know his kingdom. I choose to know the things that concern the Lord Jesus Christ. And the fruit of the Spirit is what you'll be met with at the fountain of the water gate. It's at the fountain of the water gate. Because right now, saints, we're getting ready to go into the, into the, uh, into the, into the horse gate which is where we receive our ministry. It's the horse gate. It's where we receive the burden of God's heart into a man that he wants to work through this vessel. He wants his Holy Spirit to take over this vessel. He desires that the Holy Spirit take over our vessel. And it starts in our mind, saints. Our soul and our body are starving and starving and starving for direction. And it's through the love, the joy, the peace that we have with God Almighty. El Shaddai. The love, the joy, the peace we have with him. We love him so much. When a distress comes, when, when lust starts to fill your mind and you get tempted to go and look at something you shouldn't, love God. Love God. Say, no, no, I love you, Father. I love you, Father. That's all it takes. That's, that's deliverance 101. Any kind of spiritual warfare. And I'm giving a message on spiritual warfare too. Thank God we're excluded. Yes, I said that. We are excluded. We have angels doing that for us. We just stand as ambassadors and citizens of heaven, disciples for God Almighty. We are his kingdom on this earth. And as his kingdom on this earth, we are, we are provided with all the means from heaven. Whatever is in heaven comes to us, flows to us because of the knowledge we have of the Christ in us. We can build our own material things. We can build up our own financial uh, uh, strongholds and things like that. But what does the kingdom want us to have? What did the kingdom always want us to have? That's for us to find. That's the mystery that Paul speaks of for each and every one of us. That individually we find the mysteries, the mysteries for us and then... And as we gather, we look to the mysteries of what God has for his church. Ephesians 4 tells us all about that. There's many scriptures that tell us what God originally wanted for his kingdom citizens of this earth. And that as kingdom citizens, we're getting ready to go home. We want to take as many people with us. We want to pray it through. We wait for those divine appointments. So that's what happens in the fountain and the water gate. We have love, joy, and peace with God. Then we have patience, kindness, and goodness for one another. I always say it this way. Can we be good and kind while we're being patient with each other? I struggled with that. I had to go through a lot to get to a place to understand what that meant. And then lastly, within ourselves, faithfulness, meekness, and self-control. Faithfulness to know that it's the Christ in me. I have nothing. I have nothing. It's not even about surrendering. It's about obeying, obeying the Christ in me. And, and with that faithfulness comes meekness, meaning I'm not weak. It's just that I have all the gifts within me are in control. Because what follows meekness? Self-control. It's time to control ourselves by the Spirit, being led of the Spirit. What did he say? I'll read it again. He said, um, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. I can't stress that more through Gateway Ministries. It's through those gates that when we come to the fountain of water gate, we are baptized with the Holy Spirit. Is it mandatory? Well, I'll leave that to you. I'll leave that to you to figure out. Read the Bible. Understand the Bible. Understand the Word of God. What is God's desire? Right? Jesus told Nicodemus in, Matthew, in John 3, verse 7, Don't marvel that I said you must be born again. Don't marvel. Born again is only mentioned once in the whole Holy Bible. And when he said it, the Lord himself, don't marvel at that. Then he goes into the things of the Spirit. That's why we're in so much trouble. Carnality is killing us. The flesh, reading the word of the flesh, not knowing the word of God, but denying the power thereof. And this is no condemnation in this. I just get so excited because I know there's some out there that are getting this word and it's going to change your life forever. You're going to stop those demonic cycles and enter into the seasons of God for your life. I don't care if you're 50, 60, 70. You can start right now. I'd love it if you're 15, 18, 20. You just say, you know what? It's not what that guy's saying. It's, it's what the Bible's saying. What is God's heart? His Holy Spirit is hovering over every man, woman, and child right now on the whole earth, wanting so desperately to touch them. 
and to move them to a place to say, yes, Jesus, come in. I'm going to walk through that sheep gate. And when I get to the sheep gate, I'm going to be so excited, I'm going to tell everybody. That's where the water baptism comes in, between the sheep and the fish gate. The water baptism, way back there. You want to tell, fish it for men. I want to get in front of everybody and tell anybody who's in the church today that I'm going to go down full immersion. When I come up, I'm a new creature. Does it happen all the time? I got news. I, statistically, 80% of the people go back to what they're into the day after they got baptized. And as what uh, uh, Matthew 12, verse 43 and 40 through 45 says, the unclean spirit leaves a man. He's coming back. He's coming back with, with seven others. That's eight unclean spirits. That's why there's a need for the old, the valley, and the dung. Let's be real with each other. The writing's on the wall. So it's a joy and an honor and a privilege to be part of a ministry that would bring this knowledge, to bring this understanding, both to ourselves first and then to those who would listen. Once we've been corrected, it's time to help correct others in love, in love. Remember what the word said, your gift will make room for you. While you're, while you're waiting for the Lord, for your gift to make room for you, go back to the valley. Say, Lord, I'm willing to go through the walk in the valley. Is it instantaneous? Does it happen overnight? Not really, because we're going to have to go into relationships to see where we are. People in marriages, people who have friends, people who gather with saints. But see, Satan loves to do tradi traditional things. He loves to do things by route, which keeps us from the Spirit. This is the way we've done it for 40 or 50 years. Well, is it of God? What does God want to do for today in preparation for tomorrow? So as we go through the fountain, the water gate, let me just take you to Revelations 21, verse 6. Revelations 21, verse 6. And Jesus said to me, to John, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. Wow. Anybody thirsty? As time is, as time is gaining, man, as things are happening so fast on this earth, I am getting so thirsty. I am so hungry for his righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he will add all these things unto you. I don't need to chase a thing, man. I know who I am in the kingdom, and he is going to give it to us. He's going to give it to me, what is required for this, for what I've called, been called to do. I rest in that. I do not worry. I do not fret. I do not have to run here. I don't have to run there. Oh, he's over here. Oh, he's over there. No, no, he's right inside of you. And he wants to begin something with you. That's how important you are. This is not a one-man show. It was never meant to be a one-man show. One-man shows build one-man kingdoms. When it's all of us together, united in Christ, we're going to build his kingdom. I know. I'm not even stepping out in anything. I just know that that is true. And I share that with all boldness and confidence because of the Christ in me. Not because of Dave Brumel, but because of the Christ in me. And I know it's his fervency that he wants that word to get out there. Kolake with the fountain gate, as I've already said so many times, is the water gate. We learn about the water gate in Nehemiah 3, verse 26. Our source, the water of the word, being baptized with the Holy Spirit, makes it come so much clearer. I know I've struggled for years presenting the word of God to those who just want to live in a carnal way. And being born again, being saved, is between you and God. I do not judge another man's salvation. I will never say once saved, always saved. I am not God. And I am most certainly not Jesus Christ. He has been given the task of judging all of us. But I know within myself personally, I can say that I am saved. I know that if I drop dead within the next second, out of body, I'll be present with the Lord. I know that. I know that with all confidence, not because of anything I did, but everything that he did on the cross. When I stand before the Lord on judgment day or however that's gonna work, if he says to me, how did you get here? It's by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. By the shed blood of Jesus Christ is how I do anything. It's how I can do anything, go anywhere, think anything. It is so powerful to understand the, the shed blood and the cross. Teach it, learn it, teach it, learn it, teach it, learn it. It is the source of all things. It is when they stuck the spear in the side of Jesus Christ and the water and the blood came out, that's the fountain. That's the fountain and the water of the word pouring out. Let's start church now. Let's, let's get the called out ones coming. The ecclesia, call them out. Let's send them out. Let's learn. Let's go forth. If I was to take you through the book of Acts, you would learn so many things about the water, the word, and the Holy Spirit. I suggest you read Acts chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 11, Acts chapter 10. 
You know, it's in Acts chapter 10 that we see, <laughs> we see Peter. And, uh, you know, we, we're introduced to Cornelius and Peter. Cornelius being a Roman centurion, a, Roman, a, a soldier of the world, and Peter being a spirit-filled man of God who's done so many things at the point of his contact that he's going to have with the Lord on that, on that rooftop in Joppa. And it's in, that, it's in that meeting with the Lord that he is, uh, he's taught by the Lord to not be uh, against the Gentiles no longer. I'm not going to go into great detail. I suggest you read it yourself. And what's so unique about it is that through that, uh, through that correction, Peter had to go to the valley with the Lord in a, in a, in a, in a trance. He, he showed him all these dirty animals. He said, clean them and eat them. And that represented the Gentiles. And Peter said, no, I can't touch those things. And, and the Lord said, oh, no, we're going to take away that prejudice right now. We're going to take away that prejudice right now. Paul had spoken to Peter twice on two different occasions. As moved by the Holy Spirit to do so, to correct him. It was through this move, movement of God himself, through his Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ coming to meet Peter and sending angels to see Cornelius, working the two together. And what's so unique about the, the Peter going through deliverance, that when he got to the fountain of water gate, the burden came on him by God to go to Cornelius to preach the message of the, of the truth of Jesus Christ to those Gentiles for the first time. And what is so powerful about it is that Cornelius and all of his house was baptized with the Holy Spirit before he was baptized full immersion. What a colossal meaning that is. Does that happen for everybody? I, I don't see that. That is a rare thing that happened, but it still happened. Why? Because of obedience. If we obey God, the choices we make, he, God is going to acknowledge those choices. Both good and bad, saints. Whatever choice you make in the situation you're in right now, you want to do it by the fruit of the Spirit. I know myself, I, I, I am currently in things that I am called upon to make decisions, and I so want to do them by the fruit of the Spirit. Because whatever decision we make, we're going to live by that decision. There are consequences. But through those consequences, I have the Lord Jesus Christ to walk through them with me. I have the Holy Spirit on one side, Jesus on the other. Not coming at me, but walking along with me. Praise God. Praise God. Let's look at Luke 17 before we go on to the horse gate. Let's look at Luke 17, verse 21. Sorry, verse 20. I've gone over this many times. I just want to read it verbatim from the King James Bible. Now, when he was asked, when Jesus was asked by the Pharisees, by the religious people, when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. Praise be to God. That's what we, we learn to understand as we go through these gates. It's a climax. It's a moment with the fountain of water with all the old creature gone, the new creature coming alive, that we get ready for the horse gate. And as we enter the horse gate, we know that the burdens are coming from God in heaven. Our Father, right off the bat, look at the Lord's Prayer. See, you'll start thinking of others. There is no selfishness at the fountain of the water gate. Selfishness is pride. Self-serving is pride. And as we enter, get ready for the horse gate, that burden gate, there can be no selfishness or pride. What's in it for me? Right? What's in it for me? My agenda. There are so many that are burdened out there right now. Don't even understand why. It's because you've got to go back to the old the valley and the dung to get rid of self so you can really do ministry the way it was supposed to be. You cannot create a ministry. We receive it from the Lord. and It's, it's through, the, through the actions of what we've talked about up, up to the water gate that we get ready for the horse gate. It's preparation time, saints. Prepare ourselves. Preparing ourselves to get rid of the old, to walk into the new, so that in the new we are continually refreshed. No matter how ugly that calling is, no matter how ugly that servanthood is, it, it has no effect on us. And having no effect on us, we need not preach to nobody. They will see the, the, the influence of Christ in us doing that work, that labor, that we are yoked up with him for his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And others will take, they'll look and go, wow, how are you doing that? I have people right now in the church that I'm involved with. That I, I'm a very blessed pastor because I, I have people that are gathering within that have gone through so much. They may not have understood what they're going through, but now that this teaching has taken hold of them, they're seeing it. And these are very blessed servants of God that have been really going through the horse gate, doing incredible acts of God without saying a word. And I've been so influenced to watch them. It is so humbling. It is so humbling to see them in, a, in action, the Christ in them in action. And this dying world is looking for that. They don't need us to go into their faces and yell at them and scream at them. No, no. They're looking for influence. They're looking for that fresh water. 
They're looking for that one who knows who they are in Christ, who truly knows who they are in Christ. Amen? So, let's look at the horse gate. The horse gate, Nehemiah 3, verse 28. It's a burden gate. The person who was called by Nehemiah to build the horse gate, his name means just. Just. You know, I can extend on that, justified. We are justified to do this. There will be people that come into your life and say, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are doing that ministry? Well, I know who I am in Christ. That's all there is to it. Brother, I love you. I'm not even going to argue with you. See, a prideful person will argue. A prideful person will try to justify themselves. That's not good when you're in a, in a place of ministry. We don't have to justify ourselves. The person who built this gate, we are called to help in, inside of this gate, this passageway. We are justified. It's Christ that got me here. It's Christ working through me. I know what I'm called to do. Satan, get thee behind me. It's a demonic thought that comes into a person who tries to stop you from doing what you're called to do. So before I go any further into the horse gate, I'm just going to take another break. I'm going to take a drink of water, refresh myself. It's a glorious day. God is good. We'll be right back. I'm Pastor David. You could, we'll be right back. We'll finish off the horse, uh, the east, and the inspection gate. Be blessed.